Hi friends, it's Deanna here today. And today we're going to be sewing up the Be Amazing dress. This is a beautiful dressy dress. It's got um, sleeveless and it's got this, we're gonna use the horse braid uh, to give it this nice little flounce at the bottom. Not a flounce, but just a good nice wave at the bottom. Super cute, but also super simple. So let's get to it. <laughs> Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to grab our front bodice and we're going to put it right side up on our board and we're going to grab our back bodice, our two pieces, and we're going to match up the raw edges on the shoulder seam, right sides together. So the right side of the bodice front and the right side of the bodice back are touching and we're going to match up those shoulders. And we're going to do the same thing for the liner. I'm using this white liner uh, for the inside because that way I don't have to use all my beautiful... Um, sunflower fabric, but I'm just doing the same exact thing, matching those shoulders. I'm gonna head over to my saw machine and we're going to sew those shoulders together. I'm just using a regular saw machine to sew this up and, um, or you can use a serger if you want to share the ends. Because it's a lined piece, I don't worry so much about serging the ends, the insides. But if you want to go the extra step, you can do that. I like to usually do the finish the raw edges for like a seam that is gonna be touching the bodice, the body, because it's gonna be fraying and stuff. But for the inside, a lot of times I, I don't do it, uh, but it might be something that you might wanna do. Just either sew your straight line and then do a, a finishing zigzag stitch at the edge or a serger stitch, it is up to you. So let's go do those shoulders. All right, we'll go ahead and open up those seam allowances on our bodice and on our liner. Once those are open, I wanna go ahead and put some uh, interfacing in the back of my top, my back bodice, because I want to reinforce that fabric right there where my snaps or buttons are gonna go. That way the fabric doesn't just rip out when you attach those. So I'm just attaching them as my manufacturers would say on my interfacing. Honestly, I'm just steaming them down. So there is some interfacing. Now I'm gonna face my fabric up, face up on my board, and I'm gonna grab my lining fabric, I'm gonna face it down on my board. So as you can see, this is my inside. So the right sides are touching. We're gonna match up right here at our seams, shoulder seams and all the way around our neck area. We're matching everything right sides together. All the way down our back and our arm size as well. All right, now that we've got our back and around our neck, we're gonna match up, like I said, those arm side as well because we're going to sew all the way around the arm side and the neck and back area. What is your favorite fabric to sew? Do you like sewing um, woven, non-stretch fabrics, or do you prefer sewing the knit stretchy fabrics? I really don't know which one I like better. I like wovens because they're very straight and easy to sew, and you can just sew it really nicely on the sewing machine. There's scripts lines and stuff like that. But I love knit because knit is so forgiven. So like, um, if you didn't if you didn't measure your uh, fabric, non-stretch fabric correctly, then you'll have a ripple or it just won't fit right. But with this, the knit fabric, the stretch fabric, you can just kind of tell it what to do and it obeys, sort of. But it is a little bit harder to sew sometimes because it is stretchy and slippery. So which one is your favorite? I don't know if I can pick one over the other. So let's go ahead and sew those arms and sew our back and around our neck together. Our bodices are sewn together. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna grab our scissors and we're gonna trim around, kind of give it a little bit of a curve. So I'm all I'm doing is I'm like taking little snippets around the whole thing, just making sure I don't cut the thread. You can use uh, pinning scissors um, or any kind of tool that will give you kind of a little trim right there on that seam allowance. And then also, I wanna do that on the, so 
on the uh, corners. The reason why we do this is so you can take some of that bulkiness out. You know, like I said, even with the, um, this uh, knit, uh, non-stretch, I was gonna say knit, with this non-stretch fabric, it doesn't, it, it's kind of stiff. It doesn't just kind of fold nicely like knit usually does. So we want to, like those corners, we want to be able to poke them out really nicely. Now don't cut your thread. Um, we want to be able to poke them out really nicely. So since it doesn't give a good give, you want to get, make it as easy as possible for it to like sit nicely, if that makes any sense. Like turning and not have like a bulky seam. Am I making any sense? Anyway. So that's why we do this. And it would make it a lot easier if I had the actual scissors that you use for this. But you know what? It really is not that bad. And I kind of like cutting. Kind of reminds me of when I was in younger school, when I was actually in school. This is what I like to do. Arts and crafts were my thing. So I always liked cutting and trimming. And maybe that's why I like sewing. All right, well, so I'm gonna continue to do a little bit more of this and then we'll go to the next step. See those right there? They look like teeth. Anyway, oof, now I have a mess. Okay, I'm gonna open up my bodice and turn it right side out. Kind of nicely pull it through to come right side out. And you, you, you can do is you can kind of fold this right here a little bit. So when it's coming through that gap, it does it nicely. All right, now once it's turned, I'm gonna grab a tool, whatever tool you have. I just used this little tool I have. Um, it's just a pointy tool, but it's pointy, but not pointy. And I'm gonna poke out those corners. Sometimes I use a pencil, sometimes I use a ruler. Whatever I have, I will use. Make sure you poke out. Don't do it so hard that you rip the fabric, but just poke out those corners so they look nice and sharpy. And then we're gonna go ahead and steam it. S steam it open. All right, now we're gonna open up those bodices and we're gonna grab our liners to our liners and our outer to our outers. So like, see how that, that's a line outer and outer, liner and liner. And we're gonna pin and sew. I like to open up those seams so that way they sew flat. I'm gonna go all the way down one side and the other side. And then we're gonna do the same thing for the other side. Here's the other side, here's our bodice open, here's our back. Make sure that it, this doesn't get like all twisted around when you're gonna go sew it. And we're sewing these right sides together. What are you making this dress for? I wanna know, is it a special location? Is it just because you thought it was adorable and you just wanted to make it? I'm making this one for my knees and I saw this fabric and I thought, yes, because my sister is obsessed with sunflowers. She loves sunflowers. So I thought this would be the perfect little sunflower dress. So I'm super excited about it. So let's go ahead and go sew those side seams. All right, so we put that body, bodice, <laughs> not a body, a bodice. We put that bodice aside and we're gonna grab our skirt and we're gonna put it face up on our board and we're gonna grab our other skirt or front or back, whatever. And we're gonna put it right sides together and we're gonna sew those side seams. That's so funny, we put a bodice. We put our body away. We didn't put a body away. Hopefully we just put a bodice. Okay, so like I said earlier, usually for my bodice, the parts that are gonna, not gonna be touching the body because they're encased, I don't always finish the raw edges, but usually the parts that will touch the body, so it will rub against the body a lot, 
I will finish those raw edges. So you could either go ahead and grab the skirt, the panel and sew the, the, the raw edge first with a serger or a, just finish that raw edge first and then sew with a straight stitch or you can go ahead and sew with a straight stitch and then finish them two together or you can just do it with your sewing machine, not finish the edges. It is really up to you, whatever you wanna do. I'm going to go ahead and do a straight um, stitch with my sewing machine and then I'm gonna go back over to my serger and just do a straight line to sew up, down on it just to reinforce those side seams because I like to do that. Um, yeah, let's do that. Our next step is this horse braid, um, horse hair braid. So what we're gonna do is, for some of them will come with already like a basting stitch at the edge, this one does not. So what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna go over to my sewing machine and put a basting stitch all along one edge of my um, horse hair braid because what we wanna do is once we attach it to our skirt, we wanna, we wanna give it the shape so it contours around our skirt. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over there and put that basting stitch all around it. I don't have enough for the whole bottom of the skirt, so I bought two. Um, I've got another one right here, so I'm gonna have to piece them together at two different parts where I start and end and then where they meet. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do all the way around on one and I'm gonna show you and then I'll do the other one. All right, so I set my stitch at a four and I pull a long tail so that I can pull it later. And I'm gonna go in and put in that basting stitch all the way around. And leaving a long tail at the end. All right, once we have gathered our horse hair braid, we are going to grab it and we're going to put it on the right side of our fabric. So I've got this ribbon that I'm gonna use because at the edge of it, it's kind of sharp and we don't want that to rub on the, you know, whoever's wearing it. So we wanna make sure that we, um, put a little something there to help that sharpness. So I've got my one side and I'm gonna put it down and I'm gonna grab my other end because remember I told you mine is not gonna be long enough so I've got two sides and I'm overlapping it right on that tape, well that ribbon, and I'm gonna just fold that ribbon down. That's how I'm going to close it in right here and I'm going to pin it um, or um, clip it. I think that clips work better because it kind of holds that, because this is kind of slippery. I'm doing the one edge, the edge that doesn't have the gathering stitch. The gathering stitch is on the top edge, and the straight stitch that I did not gather is on the raw edge of the skirt, and I'm putting it on the right side of the skirt. And let me tell you, make sure that you do put it on the right side of your skirt. I went ahead and put it on the wrong side of my skirt, and I had to take it apart, and honestly, that took way too long. It took longer for me to take it apart than it did for me to like sew this whole dress. So don't make my mistake. Put it on the right side of the fabric to begin with, and then you don't have to worry about it like I did. That was, oh, that took a while. And I know I didn't have to tell you that or show you that, but I just, you know, everybody makes mistakes. I know I hear a lot, you all say all the time, you make it look so easy. You know, it really is, it can be easy if you take your time and you actually, you know, read the directions and like I, you know, didn't really pay attention to, but you will still make some mistakes. What the thing that is I've learned from sewing a whole lot is that I will make mistakes, but I need to be okay with the fact that I'll make mistakes and be easy on myself as I keep going. Every once in a while, I will have to, once I'm making a project and I make a mistake and it is just a big mistake, I will walk away from the project for just a few minutes or from for a day or a couple days, however long it takes for me to feel comfortable again to go back to that project and not let that project beat me. It's okay to make mistakes. As I tell my uh, students, I, I'm a teacher, it's okay to make mistakes because what happens when you make a mistake, you learn from that mistake. And you know what? Next time I make a dress with the horse hair, I'm really 
going to think about it because of how hard it was for me to take that off. So I'm gonna really pay attention to it next time. So take those mistakes and learn from those mistakes and realize that you know we are human and mistakes ha will happen and that's okay. We'll just keep going and then this dress will be mean a whole lot more to me later because it took a while for me and it, it, and it was something I put love into and I put time into. And so that's, that's what I keep going back to. I think that we need to just be easy on ourselves when we make those mistakes. All right, now that I'm over here at the other side, I'm gonna grab some more of this ribbon for this end um, so that it overlaps as well and overlap it over and then pin or clip. I feel like the pin, the clips, I'm sorry, work better because um, it's so wiggly and so just thin that the pins don't grab hold to it as well. So I'm gonna go over to my sewing machine and I'm gonna sew a straight stitch, sew it down with a straight stitch. And what we wanna do is you, you do wanna kinda be careful because this, well, this kind I have, if you hit it the wrong way with your machine, it will wrinkle up. Um, so do it a little bit slowly so it doesn't get all cut on you. So let's go ahead and do that. Remember to switch your sewing stitch to a regular straight stitch and let's go. All right, now that we are here at this point, I'm going to go ahead and pull my um, horse braid hair out towards the outside and I'm gonna bring it in towards the inside. So I'm flipping it under, and I am going to use either pins or clips all the way around. Now remember, when you're doing this, your hem is going to look wavy because the next step is going to be for us to gather our horse braid to fit our skirt, the shape of our skirt. So we're gonna go all the way around, clamping it down first, and then this part will we'll gather it so that it'll shape our skirt. All right, so now here is the fun part. We're gonna grab that where we left that gathering stitch and we're gonna start gathering slowly so that our um, horse hair is going to fit our skirt and it's gonna give the skirt its shape. So like it needs to be flushed with the skirt. So as I gather, as you can see, it's kind of like flushing down and it's gonna kind of cause that effect where it's gonna like kind of encase the skirt, like fold into the skirt. So we're gonna, we're gonna do this kind of slowly as we gather around. It probably would be easier to do it on the ground or something like that where it, it's more manageable than doing it right here where I'm at the table. Um, so we're gonna keep going all the way around, just slowly kind of gathering that in so that it flattens out our wavy hem. Move this out of the way. And it kind of brings it in. See how it's sticking, it's, let's see if you can see it right here. How like this is sticking straight up. Well, as you gather, it'll, lay, it'll come flat because we want it to lay flat. All right, so we're gonna keep going all the way around. This is gonna take a little bit, but that's okay. You could just gotta have a little bit of patience. All right, once we've got it all ready, we're gonna go over to our sewing machine and top stitch at that like at the edge, that um, hem kind of, you know, to get it all stuck on there, all the way around the whole skirt. We're almost done. All right, how stinking cute is this going to look? I, I love this. I love the effect that that has on the skirt. 
It makes it so nice and kind of flowy. I don't know what the word is, whatever the word is. It makes it super, super cute. So I'm just kind of taking these serge edges off. I'm gonna put that to the side just a minute. I'm gonna grab my bodice. And if you're doing uh, buttonholes or, uh, yes, if you're doing buttonholes, you can go ahead and do those buttonholes now using your pattern. It gives you where you would put them at if you wanna do that now, because it might be easier to do them now before you sew the skirt and the bodice together. I am going to go the easy route and I'm going to do snaps. So I'm gonna go ahead and move on to this step where we are going to overlap our bodice an inch on the top and the bottom. Make sure it's straight. It's an inch right here and an inch right here. I probably should, you all are like, you're not measuring. I know I'm so bad. Okay, so now it's overlapped right there, an inch. All right, all right, I'll grab my ruler and measure. Just hold on, I'll do it. Let's see. <laughs> all right, I went a little bit over an inch. Okay, let's come back. Thank you, thank you for letting me know. I know, I know. You know, and like I said earlier, I like sewing wovens because they're nice and stiff and whatnot, but that's one thing. We need to make sure that it's fit correctly because then it might not fit my niece. So this is why I went ahead and listened to y'all and grabbed my ruler and measured my inch overlap. All right, thank you. All right, so now we're gonna grab our skirt and we're going to gather this skirt waist to the width of our bodice. So it's not a whole lot that needs to be gathered, but we're gonna go over, I'm gonna go over to my sewing machine and do a long basting stitch all the way around to gather the width of my skirt. So let me just go do that real quick. All right, so that's on there. What I like to do is I like to grab my two seams and mark my front and my back. That way I know exactly where I want to pin, I mean, sew that to. I know exactly where I'm gonna go, my front and my back, and I'm gonna do the same for my bodice. Side seams, we're gonna go to the front. Then side seams, we're gonna go to the back, and it's in between that half an inch right there. Then we're gonna grab our skirt. Make sure you figure out which one's your front and which one's your back. My front is my higher, and my back is the lower part. And you wanna make sure to match up those seams and grab also your liner. Don't just pin it to your outer, pin it to your liner as well. And we're gonna pin all the way around. Um, you're probably wondering, oh, you put in the basting stitch, but you didn't gather. I did, my machine, um, if when, when I'm sewing a basting stitch, my if I set my tension a little bit higher, it kind of gathers it for me already. So that's why it's, since it wasn't a big gather, that's, it's already gathered for me when I'm done. And we're going to go ahead and sew the bodice, liner and outer, and the skirt together here at the waist. Now you can do that with a straight stitch on your sewing machine and then finish it up, finish that raw edge like I said, or you can just, I think I'm just gonna hop right over to my serger and sew it with my serger right there all the way around. And then we'll come back. I'm going to do snaps is what I'm gonna do. Like I said, I'm going the easy way, snaps. And then we'll be done. If you're doing buttons, then you will do your buttons and your button holes right now as well. And then we'll be done. Super, super cute. Oh my goodness, y'all, this dress, I can't, it is, I just can't wait to show you in a minute, but first let me go ahead and do my snaps. I'm gonna go ahead and measure my snaps where they're supposed to be. And sometimes I just go ahead and go right for it. Like go ahead and mark them and go. So what I'm doing is I'm grabbing my one side of my snaps and I'm placing them in. You can. I'm not the best when it comes to this type of stuff. I'm probably, you know, 
not the most like at keeping things even but if you <laughs> if you want to you can go ahead and actually use your ruler or a tool to measure where your snaps are going to go so they're all even in in like spacing wise and away from your edge wise so they're all straight okay so I think this one is a little bit too far over. I'm starting to get like a little bit farther and farther over. Like I said, I can use my ruler and I'll just do this and go from that. So obviously that one went over a whole lot and that one went over a little bit. So I'm gonna keep it where it's at, put it right back where it's supposed to be. Put this one right back where it's supposed to be. All right, there we go. All right, so now, I mean, you can do one at a time. I, I don't know why I went ahead and did all of them at the same time, but we've got the front and then we're gonna do the backing to it. So you're gonna grab your backing and you're gonna snap it on. Now that I'm doing all of them, I might as well just go ahead and do all of them at once. Snap it on. And then I'm gonna grab my tool and both saying hello and I'm gonna press it on y'all you probably are like oh my goodness you're not even measuring very well you know I am a very easy going when it comes to sewing probably one of the reasons why I don't sell my finished product <laughs> because if I did I would probably be a whole lot more careful with measuring everything and getting it just right so I can get away with this because that's just, I don't know. But if you are more somebody that likes to take more detailed, take your time, measure that this little snap is not closing all the way. So I'm trying to do it better, getting it all the way in there. Cause then it's gonna be harder to close if that little notch is not all the way down. How cute is that gonna look? Now I'm gonna grab my backing. And what I like to do is just go straight the back so I know exactly where it is. Right there. Measure and put the backing on. So we come in from the back now because we're gonna snap right here and we put the other snap in. And get it ready. And close it okay and snap it close and we're gonna do that for all of them there it is then I'm gonna do that for all of them and we'll be done all right friends we are done with our cute little dress I love it I love the look that it gives this um, horse braid hair horse hair braid sorry gives it and it is just super, super adorable. What do you think? Please let me know if you have any questions. Let me know how easy this was. Uh, comment, like, share, subscribe to be entered for our fun fan giveaway of um, every month. We do that every single month. So go ahead and sign up for that. And also come join us on Facebook and Instagram so you can see what everybody's making and you can be inspired and you can inspire us by sharing your makes with us. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you all next time. Bye!